Pastor Lelia. Uh, My name is Yolanda Joab Mori. I'm from Pompey. Naolenawak of U. Anyone from U in here? Yay! <laughs> okay, where are my chukis at? Any chukis in here? Yes. All right. Um, I really don't have anything prepared. We just came to talk story, really. Um, so I guess my story. Um, as those of you who are coming in a little early, you probably saw Vid's mission in life is to embarrass me, and he was playing one of the speeches I gave at a, at a convention. But perhaps some of you are aware of the advocacy and activism work that I've been doing around stronger climate action. And I just wanted to share a little bit about how that came to be because that was not a plan. I did not think that I would ever be doing anything like that when I was seven years old. Um, and it just sort of evolved naturally. Uh, my background has been in climate change education. Um, I was working for IOM for seven years, and my colleague Kanita and I uh, started this program called CADRE. It's the Climate Change Adaptation, Disaster Risk Reduction, and Education Program. And we were doing this program in schools and communities in all four states, and Palau and the Marshall Islands. And this was back when I was single and didn't have kids, so I was able to move and live in every uh, FSM state working on this project. And so from that, um, that's really where my, my roots for my advocacy work formed. And I wanted to make that clear because I didn't just wake up one day and say, I have the right to talk about climate change. I have, because I'm not an expert. What I do know is that my experience in the communities and in the field is what fed my knowledge of what it is. And uh, that's really how it came to be. So through the network that I built running that program for seven years in the FSM, uh, I was invited by uh, a colleague to speak at the IUCN convention. And it was really to just do a spoken word poetry piece. And that was titled Homes of Micronesia. And it kind of captured what my experience has been living and working in each FSM state. And it gave me the rare opportunity to really develop a big sense of patriotism that I think is kind of hard for us to develop because we're from different states, separated by ocean, and we have different languages. And having that sense of FSM patriotism, we, we tend to just introduce ourselves, I'm from Pompeii, I'm from Chu. Um, but having the opportunity to call each of the islands home uh, really solidified that for me. That went pretty well, and it was received pretty well, and it just happened to be that that same year, uh, I was going to this summit called the One Young World Summit, and it's really just this international summit for young leaders. Um, my friend Stephanie Edward, who some of you may know, went the year before me, and so she was advertising it, and I looked at it, and it had a, a, a component on environment in it, so I applied and I got in and they were looking for speakers, delegate speakers, and I applied and I got in, and I gave my speech at the One Young World Summit in Canada, and that kind of just blew open the doors for me because it reflected to me that there is a lacking in Micronesian voices, in young Micronesian voices, in women Micronesian voices, in these global conversations that tend to happen about us but don't involve us. And so the more and more I go to these international conventions, because after that, I kept getting invited, and that showed me that they need to hear us, um, because that's something that's not happening. And so I went to things like the German Green Convention, or a few other things that I don't even remember the names of, but these international platforms that invited me, and that's, it just kind of took on from there. With Prail, I work on this program called the Pacific Storytellers Cooperative, who some of you are familiar with, and we develop resources to do kind of what my heart's been in through my advocacy work, is to give us the chance to finally be the voice of our local issues. There's no reason why we should be going to school and keep and, and be educated on things that were written by outsiders. We, can, we need to 
develop resources that we can relate to. And so that's kind of why I bought into this whole thing because Prale's new vision really does emphasize and value the need for putting Micronesians at the front of these projects that, uh, that need to be driven for us. Um, so that's kind of how that happened. It was no direct career path. I used to be terrified of speaking in front of people. Are you kidding me? This used to give me a heart attack. Um, but it was through the, it was really the community outreaches. And this was like very grassroots stuff. We would work in masses and uh, classrooms and huts. And uh, back then, seven years ago, it's been really interesting to see the involvement of the topic of climate change because it wasn't as hot of a topic as it is now back then and through awareness raising and through more champions from the Pacific like Kathy like Selena um, voicing these um, people pick it up because it's interesting but also because it not just carries weight because of uh, because they know what they're talking about but because the heart is there and I think that's something that's lacking when I attend these international forums I see that it's it's really disheartening sometimes because there's not there's we don't we have a lack of rep representation and again I don't claim to be any sort of expert in the in this in this field or on this topic but based on what I've observed and have been doing through the cadre program throughout the FSM over seven years I basically just go talk story like I'm trying to do now. Uh, share a little bit of what my journey has been. So, yeah, I think that kind of sums up my story. We really want to leave half of the time to just dialogue uh, and just talk stories. So, yeah, I'll just go ahead and open it up. Yeah. And uh, maybe, uh, come on up here, but let me, uh, I just also want to, get, let's uh, give uh, Amanda. So we can uh, have some dialogue with, uh, with the uh, folks. I also want to pay respect to our colleague uh, Jasmine uh, Mendiola. Uh, so uh, she's here. She's on island uh, working. She's uh, also with Prel, um, working on the same uh, line of work in climate change and uh, conservation efforts. So I think at this time we'll really open it up for our discussions. We we value that more than uh, sort of talking at you. Um, so let me get to the, some questions to any one of us. Raise your hand and I'll get you going. Yes, sir. All right. Um, one, one good thing I did hear. One good thing I did hear about that you guys did brought that up is patriotism. And that's one thing that I really love to hear and see here within our countries and within the Pacific. Uh, is there a, a way that you can kind of like push that on, encourage it and feed it more because my time being abroad was the most time that I've seen any some sort of pages. It is not really too apart from what I see. It's more so a label so people can see, oh look, FSM, that's our people. So that's an easier way for us to congregate and get together abroad. But when everyone comes back here, it's, oh, I'm chipping. Oh, they're one of them. Oh, they're this, they're that. Is there a, kind of like a, a tactic that you, you guys have come up with or you can kind of like feed into that idea and encourage them to be more patriotic, more united? Oh, goodness. That's, you wanna, I'm just going to attempt. <laughs> I think my only answer to that would be to be the representation that you think you deserve. So I, because we're such a small island community, I very much believe in the fact that every single one of us, when we step on a plane and go somewhere else, you are automatically an ambassador of the FS7 of our islands. Not in any diplomatic sense, but I think that because we're such a small island and there's such like comparing in the global uh, scale, that, uh, I don't know, the only way that I know how to, to embody or live my patriotism is to live and make my choices in a way that I think it represents 
my people and my home the best way I can. I don't know if that makes sense. But uh, I also just wanted to touch on uh, something that I think very much fed into my journey because I did spend some time living in Hawaii and I've spent some time living in Guam a little bit too. Um, and I want to acknowledge the fact that a lot of times, when growing up in Hawaii, the time that I spent there in my childhood during those very formative years, we're bombarded with discrimination and racism. That was a very real part of my growing up. And so I grew up actually thinking that I should be embarrassed to be Micronesian. That my older sisters would tell me, uh, when you go to school, if you don't want to be bullied, uh, say you're Carolinian or something. Don't say Micronesian because you'll be bullied. Like, and that was real. And, and it hasn't gotten any better. You might be seeing on all over Facebook or right now, there's this big conversation happening about being Micronesian in Hawaii and in Guam because it's not getting any better. And that very much fed into how I grew up viewing myself and valuing myself. But this coming back and like Dr. Vid's journey, this reclamation of being proud and knowing that we're allowed to be proud of being Micronesian, but not just that, but I also very much believe that if you're proud of wherever you're from, then show it. It's, it shouldn't just be a hashtag or wearing a t-shirt that says Pompe or Chuk or a bumper sticker on your car, but it's the way you live and the choices that you make to positively influence and bring up your community. We also have a very big mentality or this setback of it's hard for us. Yes, I'm in Bombecha, or just, or it's a Micronesian thing. But a lot of times, it's very hard for us to empower one another and to acknowledge someone else's success. Even the that, I don't know, but it's 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 real. And so, a lot of times, someone will be rising, and we bring them back down. And I know a lot of it's rooted in a big part of our identity is humility and keeping us grounded. Like, whenever I'm somewhere with my mother or my grandmother and someone happens to pay a compliment, oh, no, I'm so happy to They always have to counter it with a, uh, something to ins like insult me. And I was a cook. So, I don't, know what it, I don't know what it is, but I just think that uh, to uh, envision or to activate patriotism, patriotism uh, to live it and to... Uh, show it in a way that's just is in action, action-based, I guess. I hope that makes sense. You know, patriotism, patriotism for me has never been so important as it is now because of what's happening in my state of Chuk about this secession movement. Okay, I, I don't want to go political on, on, on this thing, but I, I really deeply appreciate that question because I think at the core of what's happening now in my state is this question or lack there of patriotism to the country that was formed by our, uh, you know, our founding, uh, founding leaders. Um, you know, I used to call myself, I mean, I, I still do. I'm still <laughs> Chukis at heart. Always Chukis at heart. But living in the United States, I always say I'm a Micronesian living in America. Micronesian living in America. Now that might be because of you know, because it's, it's more uh, convenient because people have a better chance of uh, better chance of knowing. Um, but. As far as I'm concerned, I'm just, I'm just going to say this and then I'll, I'll, I'll end it. But for me, patriotism is not related to a flag. Because I have no connection with the flag. Flag is a, is a, is a foreign symbol to me. Right? Of course, that defines or at least symbolizes our country. You know, four stars in it, blue. Um, but for me, patriotism is actually to a, um, a culture of life right? an identity. And I'm always always aware that I am an ambassador, as uh, my colleague uh, Yolanda said, I'm always an ambassador to my country, wherever I am. It was, you know, for, I, I mentioned I, was, I worked at Santa Clara University for 10 years. As assistant director of international programs, my job 
was to go visit, we sent 40% uh, of the junior class every year to overseas to study abroad. My job, this Micronesian, my job was to go visit those students all over the world, right? And so that little passport, everywhere I went, people had no idea where. I mean, literally, people were passing on the, you know, this, I mean, Spain is talking, asking somebody if they know, you know, what this thing, what this, where is this country, right? I've never been so proud to carry that passport, right? Because, I mean, I always felt this pride to share where my country is. Um, and that's a passport to our nation, not a passport for Chuk. Um, so, at heart, I'm Chukis, but, you know, I'm proud that my own relatives uh, were the founding, you know, first president of this nation. Uh, that's pride in that because they fought hard for you know for us to be liberated, right? Also, <laughs> sometimes I share, you know, that the uh, the Spaniards discovered us, right? And then we were traded to the Germans, right? And then sold to the Japanese, and then we were liberated by the Americans. Right? Are we fully liberated? I, I don't think we are. We're still tied to a country. Uh, but I think internally, spiritually, we need to be liberated. We need to be taking on these roles. I mean, it's not like we're not taking on. I mean, there are, you know, obviously citizens who are taking on leadership roles in this country, in, I mean, in the college, on the national level. But I think the key role now is for the young people to, to feel that sense of we need to, we can't just be in college for the good of our families. We need to be thinking about what is the next level of engagement for our country. Right? When these uh, old folkies are you know, dying off, who is going to be there to replace them? Uh -huh. Other questions? This is cursed. This mic is cursed. <laughs> Hi. Questions? Hi. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Well, it's not a question, it's a comment. I like how you um, portray patriotism within our country. I just like to comment on how you advocate Micronesia as a whole, showcasing ourselves out there. Because I had the same problem back in the States. Um, in a way, like Hawaii, how Micronesians are discriminated and how we're not known as well. Because I grew up in Washington, and like when they hear the word Micronesia, they're, they're like, what, what is Micronesia? Is that what? Microwave? What do you guys say? <laughs> or other nicknames like, oh yeah, cockroaches. Like, you guys are receivable of AIDS or something like that. But really, as a young, like millennial, we're here to like advocate our country, not just a receiver of resources and all that. We're doing this to showcase ourselves that we have proof. We're here, we're a growing nation. I'd just like to comment and acknowledge your guys' work. That's basically it. Thank you, kind, thank you, very kind. As an, as an educator, particularly in higher education and community outreach efforts and community advocacy, um, when I was in, in Hawaii for the last five years, or the past five years, it was really important for me, for the college students who were there from the Pacific, from Micronesia, Palau, and uh, Marshall Islands, to be role models for the next generation. Right? Goosebumps here, because of the fact that in Hawaii, those young people in high schools, in middle, middle, elementary, middle school, believe me, elementary, middle school, and high school are completely struggling with identity issues because they've been, um, they've been trampled on and made to believe that Micronesians do not matter and that they're the lowest end of the, you know, the, the communities. So, and so many of those high school students, many of those uh, young people don't actually believe that they can go to college just like you. Right? One of the things that's great about Hilo, UH Hilo in particular, yeah. in Spence uh, Yes, right, yeah. The great thing about UH Hilo, in my opinion, and I, I'm no longer working for UH Hilo, but I, you know, I just had that experience, was because those students work together. There's an identity of college engagement, college students who work together, from Samoans to Palauans to Micronesians to Marshallese that there's just kind of the spirit at the small school of working together. And so it was really important for those Micronesians, I mean, one of the things I've, I came to, to uh, experience which was really moving for me was that 
the Pacific Islanders or the Micronesians, the Marshallese, who came directly from our region and moved to Hawaii, you know, UH Hilo, people like you are attending schools here and then go on to four year institutions there. They came with such pride in who you are and what you are, you came with some foundation compared to those, their counterparts, college students who grew up in the US, and in, in, in particularly in Hawaii, who have been made to be shameful of their identity. That connection between just those college students was real powerful to see, students who had for a long time suppressed their identity to really experience students like yourselves who came, you know, come from these regions, um, who still understand the language, who still speak the language, who still dances the, you know, our cultural practices, uh, and still have this sense to say, I'm Micronesian, you know, with pride, rather than, you know, saying. So my work has been just, if you want to look at uh, some of the, you can go on navigatingsuccess.org, that's a website, that's a movement that we started at UH Hilo, now it's replicated uh, on Oahu, uh, essentially a, a conference where college students engage with high school students of our, um, to get them, uh, and, then, and now, last year when they had held it, uh, the Micronesian Resource Center in Guam sent delegates to that, because they're about to uh, uh, replicate that in, in Guam as well. My hope is that it gets replicated across the, the continent of the United States, for, for us to continue to engage with young people. Because I think we have to build it right now. A lot of people are hurting, so it, it's up to us to, to develop that. Uh, I want to give put uh, Shanti on, uh, on the spot because her work um, in legal research, particularly with the Micronesian communities in terms of legal issues and personal response, is key. All right, so um, I'll attempt to also answer the question by but it's really based on um, my experience living abroad and going to school. So what you have to do, there is a difference between humility and taking responsibility mm -hmm. to show that you are built and you are capable to also do what they're doing. When, um, and this is really taking on leadership roles, not within our community. It's really important to have that within the community, but also in reaching out and being and playing leadership roles in other communities. So at the law school, I became the co-president for Asia Pacific uh, organization in that law school. And that's like the only way to elevate it to that part because you are sitting there and you're saying, I am Micronesian. And that's the only way, effective way to have them hear you as a Micronesian. So you have to keep fighting to be in decision-making roles outside of your community because that's one way for other people not I'm not I don't want to say forced to listen to you but to be to be available to hear where you're from. So that leadership role um, built into in Hawaii, you all know how we are received there, our reputation. So being involved in advocacy groups. These groups are mostly lawyers from outside. So some of them you have to get to know so that when they introduce you to their friends that may look down on Micronesians, they know that you are Micronesian and you can also become an attorney. So it's really in those capacities, while it's good to build it within your community because it empowers you to speak out more, but you also elevate that and kind of speed up that process by becoming lead a leader within the outside group. And that's like when you go to universities, please do not think that you cannot be a leader in a Pacific Islanders group, an Asia Pacific American Law Student Association, I didn't think I even had a shot, but how do you know if you don't try? So because of that, you will be surprised at how many people will support you because they've been there and they understood that only through that channel that people will learn where you're from. So that's what we've been doing in Hawaii. We're going out physically to the community and helping them fill out applications. And it's not with my expertise, but attaching myself with attorneys that have worked within that community 
for the longest time, and those are the people that have the heart to teach you to eventually do what they're doing. So I hope that kind of answered the question. Okay. We have one more question. Right. I'm sorry. I, I'm going to. Right on. Grab the mic. Right on. Grab the mic. Thank. Thank you. Thank. everyone, from Kashai and uh, Pompeii. I'd like to uh, thank these beautiful young women and Vid for coming here and sharing this opportunity. I mean, sharing their wisdom and knowledge with us. My name is Roxina Philarang. I worked for Pro for a little while and then I moved here because that was my ultimate goal, to go out there, get an education, and then come back and help our country, right? So for those of you who don't really understand what Pro is or what they stand for, I was like you before. Before I worked for Pro, people asked, I mean, I asked them, I mean, people ask me if I know about Pro, and I go, I know their logo. I didn't know it stood for Pacific Resources for Education and Learning. So right now, I'm in a position to campaign for Prowl. I know Prowl from the inside. These are really good people. I know there's been rumors. I've heard those rumors. But I've worked with them in Honolulu. And Prowl at the office is the only place I could wear my skirt, my Micronesian skirt, without feeling like I'm being discriminated against. I mean, you can't even cross the street without being, without feeling threatened that they might run over you. Seriously. And I'm a mother of two boys, one of them who's been abused at school because he's my Indonesian. It's really painful. I mean, I, like these two young women, I stood up for myself. I lived the life, I know what it's like, like in Guam, in Hawaii, in Washington, it's ugly. And you don't want to be there. You don't want your children to go through it. So that's why I support Prowl. They're the only organization I, knew, I know in Hawaii that do not discriminate against our people. They believe in us. They have a passion for their work. They might not truly really understand how things work here, but I know they're trying their best. And now we have more of our folks working for Pro, And I'm really proud of that, too. So um, this is the chance to really ask them questions and bring up your ideas. Because they really are here for us. I can say that they are here for us. I like that Vit said, um, if you want, uh, I mean, I don't want, I came in late, sorry. So um, I overheard you saying something about how um, elementary teachers, your goal is to help them get. The Teach for Micronesia. The Teach for Micronesia project. Yes, yes. What is that again? It, uh, Teach for Micronesia is a, it's a project that we're developing to get um, Micronesians, um, college graduate Micronesians to. Uh, come back and before that you begin your your careers, whether it be in law or in marine science or whatever it may be, uh, to have a foundation of two years teaching in uh, public schools uh, that will partner with us um, to get those. So as a as a form of nation building and engaging our young people as a movement to, to get them involved in that. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate my teachers. I grew up in Kashai, like I said, so I had. I re I'm really thankful for my teachers in Kashai and also those here at Omine, Colonia Elementary, and Pix High School. Thank you um, for all your support. But I didn't know the difference until I came back 18 years later of how much help we need as teachers and as students. Because my son came the other day. He was like, Mommy, can you please talk to my teacher? I go, Why? Um, I want him to teach me more because he's interested in science. I was like, why, what's wrong? He's like, he just writes on the board and then asks me to copy. And then he gives me tests. That's how I learned things too. And I don't blame these teachers because it's probably how, I mean, they're trying their best too. They have families to feed and you know, they have responsibilities, but at the same time, you know, they need you know, people like Vit and them to help give that push, right? from within too. So thank you, Pearl. 
Thank you, Vid. Thank you, Yolanda, Jendi. Thank you all for coming. I'm glad to be here too, and thank God. Looks like you've got five minutes, four minutes. Yeah. That way you can get out and go to your classes. <laughs> Blame us for being late to a class. So, one, maybe one more question. Thank you very much for those kind words. Question. Yes, sir. So I, uh, I think I heard you mentioning about a project. I know that Perel used to have lots of projects that you guys did back in the day. So can you kind of explain more about your current project about education and what that is about? The, the Teach for Migration project or other projects that uh, Perel is involved in? That and then maybe like other projects you guys are working on and the okay. status of those. Um, I won't go through it. I'm going to just put up a slide here and then um, this, that would be because we don't have time to uh, go through all of those. Let me just do this real quick. Um, and I appreciate that. Um, look at that. Uh, I think that the best way to approach this, because we have one minute, two minutes left uh, on this, uh, it just, I mean, take a look at this, but also go on the Prel website, prel.org, um, and take a look at all the, the programs and pro projects that we're uh, developing. This We didn't want to, I mean, this week we've been going around meeting, and, and really we have a, a, an entire thing uh, about Prel, but we didn't want to focus this simply on Prel, um, because Prel uh, really focuses on engagement with teachers, principals, and policymakers, um, and so our work uh, it, with youth and with students is kind of uh, uh, things that we're developing too. But most of the work that Pearl does is really to build capacity for teachers, public school teachers, principals, um, to improve um, school performance for students. Right. So if you look up there, those are some of the programs and services that are currently uh, are uh, exist in in Pearl. And I think. Right? Is that about uh, all the time we have? Okay. Unfortunately, yes. Yes. I'm going to say this um, on behalf of our team is thank you so much for honoring us with your presence. Uh, thank you for those questions and the comments. Um, uh, we simply uh, want to uh, say thank you and, and God bless all of you. so much for um, inspiring us today. Thank you. And for your work and your, and your heart and your love. Thank you. And thank you all for coming. Um, so, Micronesia Rising. Yeah. Um, come there, refresh